Taxes are complicated. Is it worth paying an expert to do them? Sometimes, but today Ian Martin will explain why you should file your taxes yourself starting right now. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Ian, welcome back. You are, as everybody knows, a chartered accountant and a CPA, and you worked for a few years at Canada Revenue Agency. Was it called Canada Revenue Agency then? Uh, Yeah, it was. It it went through the uh, Revenue Canada, then the CCRA, and then they dropped one of the C's and became the CRA. Gotcha. So it's been that way for a long time. You are, of course, now a licensed insolvency trustee, so you understand taxes from all sides. So taxes are complicated. That would be the general view of the world, I would think. You know, you make one mistake, you forget to fill something out, cost you thousands of dollars. So why then should our listeners consider filing their taxes themselves? Well, I, I think we need to start with that basic premise that taxes are complicated. We're off script already. So Uh-oh. so you disagree with what I'm saying that uh, well, taxes are complicated. They can be complicated and uh, they certainly can sound complicated. But for the vast majority of Canadians, uh, they really aren't that complicated. Most people have... Uh, you know, a couple of slips that you get from your employer or your bank. Uh, And really the preparation of the tax return is like literally somebody uh, inputting that information into a tax program where then all the calculations are done for them by the computer. So if I've worked at one job all year, I get one T4. There's like it, four it, it numbers to type It can't get much in. easier than that. Right? So it's, Maybe so it's five pretty six, simple. But yeah. Oh, right. And and we've talked before in the past about how for the last uh, few years, uh, Canada Revenue has this great service where you can actually, uh, it's called autofill, where you can actually impress some magic buttons and that you don't even have to input that data anymore. It'll actually get sucked from the CRA website into the tax preparation the program. The suck it in button. Well, one, of, one of my favorite buttons. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this on a very basic level then. So how am I going to file my taxes? Is it like the old days where I go to the post office, get the book, fill it in? Is that how it works? Well, it's no longer 1972. It ain't uh, 1972. Well, judging by my suit, it is, but okay. Well, so, fine. so you could do it that way. You can still request the paper forms from Canada Revenue and you can fill it out. You can do the calculations yourself, but not too many people do that. The vast majority of people will use one of the many, uh, you know, computer programs that are out there these days. There's lots of big companies uh, that prepare software. They update it every year for the new, you know, rules and regulations and tax rates. Uh, yeah, so the vast majority of people, whether they're doing it on their own or obviously if you go to like a, a tax preparer, they're going to be using software. So so no, Doug, you, you, you don't it's, use It's paper. extremely unlikely that you would be using paper but I these could. days. You could. I could. You okay. Could. Probably would slow things down quite well, a bit. That, that's exactly the point, right? So if you go on the Canada Revenue website, for, for years they've been encouraging people to go online in different ways, whether it's, uh, you know, with the uh, the online accounts that they have or, or e-filing. And we're not going to just do that to keep the government happy. That's not the way most people are programmed. But of course, they try to highlight the benefits for the individual. If you e-file your tax return, it's going to get received and processed quicker. Well, you might say, well, no big deal. I don't get a refund. But there's lots of other things that can come from that as well, like various benefits like uh, uh, HST checks, you know, parents with the Canada Child Benefit. In Ontario, we have the Trillion Benefit. Uh, pensioners with low income that have a supplement on their pensions. None of those things can be determined and start to be paid to you until your tax return from last year gets filed and assessed. Because all those things essentially reset every year. Right, right. It, it's it's at least somewhat dependent on your income level and the government uses your tax return from last year to determine your eligibility and the amount they're going to pay you in the upcoming year. Yeah, and so if you file it on paper on April 30th, it might be sometime in the summer Months, before it's actually weeks, getting, who knows? getting processed. So. Yeah. Okay, now I want to talk about the whole software thing, but before, you know, why can I not just go onto the CRA website? Because we all have a My CRA account. Well, not all of us, but more more and more of us these days. it's free. It's not hard to get, right? right? And as you said, in that My CRA account, it actually lists all the stuff that's there. (laughs) Right, all the information is there. All my T4s, all my whatever. So why can't I- Investment slips, everything. Everything Everything is there, RSP contributions, whatever. So why can't I just click a button and say, yeah, I looked at all this, this is cool, I agree, just just do it. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting question because we, we both just a moment ago said, oh, everything's there. But that's kind of the thing. Not necessarily everything is there. We have what's called a self-reporting system where um, the government puts the onus on us to say, yes, 
yes, this is my situation. So I know there are some countries that have the kind of system that you refer to where you can check it and and say, yes, this is the whole deal. Um, but I mean, the reason why, well, one of the reasons why why it's not quite like that is that there could be other things that the government doesn't know about. You might have a small business, you might be entitled to certain deductions or credits that they're not aware of. But I think really, because there are certain countries that have adopted the kind of model that you're referring to, it could be as simple as like a technology question, right? Because <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure we got fantastic technology. Right, here. right. So I mean, in lots of different ways, you've got the Canada Revenue Agency trying desperately to jump into the 21st century, yeah. maybe. But there's lots of different ways that they are lagging on that. And so, what is an example of something that wouldn't be there? So, uh, rent receipts from my landlord, right, wouldn't right. be there, right? And in Ontario, that would perhaps entitle you to the trillion benefit. Medical expenses, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's things like that, medical expenses, uh, donation credits. It could be that... Uh, you so have charitable a, donations don't get reported because I don't put my social insurance number when I go and give... Right, exactly. There, there's not a perfect system that way. So that um, would be another one. But then one of the other uh, common scenarios is somebody who has a small business in addition to their employment income. So there's, you know, for in, in most situations, there's just no way for the government to know what your uh, what your net income is. In some situations, there will be a slip that says, you know, this company paid to Ian's company X number of dollars, but they have no idea what kind of deductions I might be claiming against them. Right. So if you operate a business, there's no way they could do it because they don't have the information. Exactly. So what is net file then? Net file, right. So, um, I mean, it's basically like the the portal, right? That that you connect to the uh, on the Canada Revenue website to say, you know, I want to file, I want to electronically file my tax return. So it's a secure portal that you connect to through the tax preparation software. Gotcha. So it does not allow me to file my tax returns on the net. It's just the portal that they use. Right, right. So you have to have, you know, the the software that is that you've used to prepare the tax return. And then, you know, you click some magic buttons when the return is done and it connects you to the CRA net file portal to then receive the, uh, the, the, the document, like the computer document that has all your details in there. Gotcha. So when I was doing my show prep, yeah. as you know, okay. I do a lot of show prep. Hours and hours. Hours and hours. I went on to the CRA portal and okay, I, it's called NetFile. I get all that. But there's also this thing called refile. Refile. What is refile? Yeah, and you know, I only heard about that recently myself. And it's the same kind of idea. It's a secure portal that is specifically for adjustments where, uh, you know, you filed your return and then there's either new information that you forgot about or you just realized you missed something or maybe there's some kind of um, new uh, credit that you're entitled to that you didn't know about before. So it's a way to go in and, and file the adjustment request. Because what we used to do in the old days was file an adjustment request, which was oh, essentially a piece of paper. Very manual I process. write on, this is the line, I put down this, but I meant to put down this, whereas yeah. now there's a portal you right, can do right. that. Right, so we were kind of joking, maybe poking some fun a moment ago. So this is an example where between the, you know, I mean, NetFile has been around for, you know, decades now. But the, um, you know, the autofill function I mentioned before with being able to suck your information, the refile, these are ways that... You know, Canada Revenue Agency is trying to get more automated. They're trying to make it easier for people. But I think they still have a ways to go. And I happen to be a fantastic supporter of the Canada Revenue Agency. So if, if they are listening now, I think they're doing a fantastic <laughs> job. I don't know what Ian's talking about. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the topic of this yeah, show. Yeah, what was the topic exactly? Why you should talking. file your taxes yourself. So let's. why don't we start by answering that question then. Why should you file your taxes yourself? Now, you've made the comment that in a lot of cases, they're not that complicated, um, okay, it still doesn't answer the question then. So why should you do them yourself? Right, right. I think it was implied, but maybe not exactly spoken. And it's it's cost, right? If you go to, you know, one of the big- We won't mention them because they're not sponsors of this show. Right, but, but they You're might, talking about H&R Block, Liberty Tax, all those kind of guys. Right, exactly. So so these are big companies. And really, for, for the most part, especially for simple returns, they can get the job done. But a lot of these places, like everything else in this world, the cost has gone up in the last few years. I've had people- with I've seen clients tax like basic simple tax returns just a few slips to, to input costing them like hundred and twenty dollars uh, to do that. If you could like see if you could see in person how little time it takes for that guy that for that person to input those slips and do that, you would just like pull your hair out thinking, oh my goodness, like what the heck did I pay for? 
So that's the obvious answer. Do it yourself and you can save money. You're not paying. And if you've got yourself and your spouse, for example, who both only have one T4, then you're talking you perhaps a couple, a couple hundred, hundred bucks. dollars. Yeah. Okay. So that's the obvious reason for doing them yourself. What other reasons are there for why you should file your taxes yourself? Oh, well, some people like to have control over the situation. And I, I guess that's tricky because it, I, I feel like there's kind of a, like a balance in here because for somebody who in the past has paid somebody to do their taxes, you know, maybe they didn't feel that sense of control, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe through our comments, it'll help to, you know, demystify a little bit, you know, this, this thing, this complicated area of, of income tax so that more people will be willing to do it on their own. But then when I, when I say control, um, tax preparation companies in, you know, starting in late February, March, April, early May, they're like factories. You know this, Doug. I mean, you used to work at a big accounting firm. I've worked at accounting firms. Um, my, my very first accounting job was in uh, winter and spring of 1995. I was a 20-year-old co-op student from the University of Waterloo, and I don't know, I prepared hundreds of tax returns that year. Um, did I know, was I a tax expert? Well, no, I knew a little bit, but I was I was the monkey who was taking the slips. And of course, we didn't have autofill then, right? Um, but I was the monkey who was doing the manual input of these slips into the tax program. And even then, you know, even for a guy who didn't know a whole lot about taxes at the time, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour to do a return. Um, so you get, you know, with big accounting firms, you're, you are, you are getting service, but you can kind of get lost in the shuffle as well. Right. So somebody who really wants control over it, you control over when it gets done. Um, you're, you're guaranteeing that your return is filed as quickly as possible and assessed as quickly as possible. Yeah. And so if you are a control freak, then it makes perfect sense that I should know what's going on. Right. But, but then the paradox is, I mean, we're saying, hey, the control freak, but I mean, the control freak out there who's listening to us is probably already doing his or her own taxes. Right. Right. And I guess you got to realize what you're giving up is there's somebody on the other side of the table who's just going to take your T4 slip and type it in. So is it really worth it paying the big bucks for that when you can be when you can be doing it yourself? You're not getting personal attention per se. <laughs> They're not doing a whole bunch of tax planning for you no, if no. you have a simple situation. R right. And I think that's the key, right? We keep saying taxes are simple. Taxes are simple. Well, m most are simple. I mean, there definitely are situations where you should be having a professional uh, helping you with your taxes when there are more complicated questions or, or when there is, when you're in a circumstance that actually warrants actual strategic planning, right? That would be very different than what we're talking about today. Yeah, and I think it's important that you are paying the money. Mm -hmm. You should be involved in what the money is you're paying. So if at the end of the year, you actually look at your T4 slip and it says, here's how much taxes you already paid this year and here's how much <laughs> you paid in CPP and EI. You should know that that's how much is, is going to the government. You should be involved in the process of paying that money. I think right. knowing what's going on kind of makes right. sense. Well, I mean, it's, it's a thing though that in this world, it just seems, well, maybe it's my world because, you know, an accountant, a trustee, we talk about financial stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, we talk about taxes all the time. But in, in my world, taxes continues to be one of the subjects that people just get so uptight about, right? It's just, it's this mysterious, aloof thing that seems so inaccessible for so many people. And it, it I know it seems for whatever reason, really hard for people to penetrate through that and, and take the time it needs to realize that for most of us, it really isn't that complicated. But you're confirming what I said at the start of the show, which is it it can be complicated. If I was to, let's say I've got a pretty simple situation. I've got a couple of T4 slips. Maybe I got an RSP slip or something. Mm -hmm. If I was to do it myself and then hit print and print out the full return, mm -hmm. not just the jacket, but every single schedule, yeah. you're talking a couple of dozen pages? Oh, right. More. In a lot of cases, more, right? And, and that's where, you know, the cynical people out there will say that, uh, you know, the, the lawyers, the accountants, the tax preparers, there's almost like this soft collusion to keep things, at least the illusion of being more complicated because it's, it's kind of, you know, helps to, uh, you know, strengthen your, your, your industry, right? You, you, you need me, this, this actually is complicated. So you need me to, you know, wade through all this, this murky, uh, legalese with your tax return. Yeah. Soft collusion. I yeah. like that. I like that. Well, let me give you another example of soft collusion. Cashback. 
<laughs> tell me, you know what I'm hate talking it. about. Yeah. So tell me what cashback is and tell me why you hate it. Yeah. Um, so again, so some of the big tax preparation companies, um, you know, you go in, you, you you pay your fee, whatever it is to do the tax return, and then they determine that you're eligible for a refund, whatever the refund is. Um, but recognizing that some people are you know, very cash strapped and, and desperate, um, what they do is that they offer to basically give you an instant refund, an instant cash refund. I'll give you the refund right now, Doug. But here's the catch. And maybe they don't do a great job explaining this. I, I won't have the numbers exactly right here. But let's say you were eligible for a refund of $1,000. Well, they're not going to give you $1,000 today. They're going to discount it by something like 5, 10, 15, 20%. So maybe they give you like $900 today. But then you sign a form that goes off to Canada Revenue that basically directs them to send the refund to the guy who just prepared your taxes. So maybe you just paid like 120 bucks for a simple tax return. And then you just, you know, if, if you got 900 instead of $1,000, you just paid another $100 to get your taxes done. And the only benefit potentially is that you got your cash today. Well, Doug, if you hit, you know, e-file and you go through the net file portal and you do that yourself, how quickly do you get your tax refund if you do that in March or April? Uh, seven days. Exactly. Exactly. Like a week and a half. So was it worth spending that extra $100 or whatever it is? to have your tax refund a few days earlier. And I'm thinking time value of money. No, we're in a low interest rate <laughs> environment. It, it top, probably doesn't make sense. So Unless you, you hit the wave exactly right in your crypto account. Right, maybe, exactly. Maybe. If that was the day Bitcoin was going to take off, then I guess it was a, a brilliant idea. And we're just joking there, people. So what you want to do is understand that a tax preparer will prepare your taxes and you can pay them. Cash back is a different thing. Right. So you can go to the tax preparer and pay the money. You do not have to discount your return. No, though. no. You can, because if it's being electronically filed and it's a simple return, you're going to get your refund in a few days anyways. Exactly. So, and, and I don't think that they call it a fee, but that's the way I look at it, right? Yeah. It's like an additional fee. Yeah. So not a fan of cashback. Okay. No, well, no. well, neither am I. Okay. So the topic today, why you should file your taxes yourself. And so I've written down some reasons why... People say, oh, no, you shouldn't file your taxes yourself because here's all the, the problems you could get into. So one of them people say as well, if you do your own taxes, you're probably going to make some kind of mistake, which means you're more likely to get audited. Yeah, and, and that there might be some logic to that. Um, you know, but the, the idea of the mistake, right? If you make some kind of mistake, then sure. But all these programs that we're talking about, they're so automated. Like, it's really hard to make a mistake. Like, you have to have your... Um, you know, years ago, I remember a story is, I think it was my brother-in-law, um, his uh, his wife prepared her tax return. This is, you know, in the 90s. So I think they actually did like... A, on paper. On paper, exactly. And, uh, you know, she, she forgot the schedule to calculate her Ontario taxes. So she was expecting this big refund. And then, of course, it was, I don't know if it was like, it was either a much smaller refund or actually a balance on because she forgot to calculate the whole Ontario tax portion. Well, you can't do that today. Right, you have to have an address in there. the The programs will automatically calculate your Ontario tax or Alberta or wherever you are. Right, so so things like that just can't be missed. So let me give you an example then of where it it could get you into trouble. Let's say I work as a server at a restaurant. Okay. Okay. And so I take my T four slip from the restaurant and I put that down and boom. Now it is. My understanding that CRA is probably going to go, wait a minute, you're a server at a restaurant. <laughs> okay. You should have received something in tips unless right. you're really lousy at this right, job, right. which I probably would be. So that's the kind of thing where if I go to a tax preparer, they're probably going to say, look, you got to put down something for tips. Like, come on, even though they're not on your pay stub, CRA is going to at least expect that 10% of your income or something comes from tips. Right, right. And I guess that's, uh, well, that's kind of an interesting thing because- uh, I, I know in my time at CRA, they would go on, um, you know, kind of these these binges where they would they would uh, kind of hit certain industries hard. And at the time, this is about 15 years ago, I think it was. Uh, they actually hit servers really hard because they know they know exactly what you said, right? There's there's you know cash in certain industries. You know, it's not reported, so they they hit it pretty hard. And I think more employers. Um, wanted to make things easier for their employees. They don't want their employees to struggle. So they, they've tried to, I think, make it um, 
you know, less easy to uh, to circumvent that. But it still happens, obviously. Yeah. Right? Well, and let's face it, a lot of everything now is electronic. Yeah. So it's quite common now if you're a server that your tips are actually showing exactly. up on your paycheck because exactly. it's not like we cash out at the end of the right. night and everybody gets some yeah. cash. Well, it's funny, like one, one of the... I don't know if it's a common misconception, but I've heard this before. You've heard this before. People thinking that something like tips, that they're not even taxable. Right. And that that's obviously not true. Actually, I looked this up. I got the word in here. So Section 5 of your Income Tax Act says that a taxpayer's income for a taxation year from an office or employment is the salary, wages, or other remuneration, comma, including gratuities, received by the taxpayer in the year. So... Um, it's very, very explicit, right? It's, yeah. There's there's no way. And people saying, oh, but it's cash. It doesn't doesn't count. Like, no, that's obviously not the case. Yeah, the short rule is if you got it, it's taxable. Pr- pretty much. Pretty there's much. not a whole lot you can get that that isn't taxable. So, okay, well, you're talking myths and misconceptions. Here's another one. You don't have to file your taxes if you don't owe anything. Right, so that would be a myth. Um, I, I think it, it kind of evolved um, because... The, the, the penalties for, um, you know, not filing taxes or late filing taxes, they're, they're calculated based on how much you owe from that year. So, you know, somebody could not file his or her taxes for three years and then file all three years at one time. Um, but if they had refunds for all those years, there's no immediate financial penalty from the government. So I think maybe people have misunderstood that and say, oh, I don't need to file my taxes. Yeah, because right. you will, you, the penalty you will pay is this percent of zero while it's nothing. <laughs> right, right. So, I could, let me check the math there. Yeah, it doesn't right. really matter. Exactly. Um, so, and and I know I've met people before that know full well what I just said and that, oh, it's it's a hassle, whatever. I only file every couple of years. I'm thinking, well, okay, but there's other benefits that you might receive because of your tax information. We mentioned these before, right? Uh, Canada Child Benefit, uh, HST checks, things like that. If you don't file your tax return, you would definitely will not get that information. Well, in, in or that that money, right? that money. Well, yeah. in 2020, there was the climate action incentive. I don't know, does that still exist for 2020? Yeah, it's, it's been around for a couple of years now. That, that's a good point, right? Because we we see that with a lot of our our bankruptcy clients, where um, you know somebody has very very modest income. Maybe their only income is like uh, the Ontario Disability Support uh, Plan, where it that income goes on their tax return, but it's not taxable. So for somebody who only has ODSP income, they're definitely not going to owe money. And back in the olden days, meaning more than a couple of years ago, they wouldn't owe money, but they also wouldn't have a refund. But now there's there's this tax credit that you're referring to that even if you don't have any taxable income, you might get a refund of a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. So even if you don't owe money, you may be in a position to get a refund. You're not getting a refund if you don't file. Right. Exactly. And obviously things like child tax credits and all those other things are triggered by filing the tax return. So again, even if you don't owe any money, yeah. you you don't get them. So so it's not a myth in that, well, if you don't file your taxes and you owe money or you get a refund, nothing happens to you, but it means you're well, also not getting the refund. Right, but I, I said a moment ago that there's no immediate consequence, but there's, there's, a, there's, there's a penalty called like a late filing penalty, um, or maybe it's called repeat offender. I don't know if the word's exactly right, but here's the gist. So the scenario that I described was the, the person who files three or four years, uh, all refunds, so no financial penalty. But then let's say... Um, you know, I, I get behind again and then down the road, I, I do file late um, and I do have money owing. Well, I'm going to pay another penalty because now I'm a repeat offender mm. on being late on it. So they're not going to give me any kind of consideration, like no forgiveness at all. Yeah. So if you end up owing money in the future, it's going to make you look bad that you didn't file your taxes in the past, even exactly. though there was a refund. I'll give you another reason. Oh, please. Um, I'm going to the bank to get a loan. Okay. And maybe I'm a self-employed person oh, and right. they want me to prove my income. Right, right. And, and so that. it's very common for the bank to say, well, okay, uh, you can't show us your T4 because you work as a self-employed contractor. Right. Show me your taxes. Show me your taxes. Right. And you go, well, look, I've been sending the government a thousand bucks every month because I know I own the money and I know there's a re- Too bad. You didn't file your taxes. Right. So, and whether it's a mortgage, a car loan, something else, um, taxes are pretty good proof of what your income was. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, obviously, banks are all about you know, making money, but also managing risk, right? So they want as much information as possible before they, they make an investment in you. And another example would be I'm renting an apartment. 
Mm-hmm. And they go, well, we, we want you to prove your income. Well, I got tips and I did. Okay, well, <laughs> show us your tax return. Yeah. That's how much we'll, right, we'll, right. we can Something's count on. Something somewhat objective, right? right? Yeah. So, so a whole bunch of reasons then for, for filing your taxes. Okay, final myth I want to ask you about. And sure. I don't want you to give me a two-hour lecture on this one because oh. we could go down the rabbit yeah, hole. You have but, piqued uh, my interest. What, what is the Income thing? tax is voluntary. It's not oh. constitutional, <laughs> so you don't have to file if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, take the high road. Um, yeah, that's a myth, I'll say. I was thinking about some other words, but I don't know where this comes from. I mean, I've, I've again, I, I saw it in my, when I was at CRA, people with all these, you know, quasi legal arguments about how the system is unconstitutional and blah, blah, blah. Okay, good luck. And good luck to you, I say, right? So, so if you want to go down that road, and a, a lot of people, there's, you know, kind of scammers. Maybe that's not a nice word. Can I say it? Well, no, I, you, right. you can use Schemer, it scammers, you scammers, right. scammers, sure. Right, right. People who promote these ideas and will, you know, charge you some kind of fee for this information. I, I know the secrets to the tax system. So you go pay some money to hear this guy's lecture and then enough people get brainwashed where now they refuse to do their taxes. So your, your charlatan has made his money. Um, so when you don't file your taxes and you go to court with the government down the road, is that guy still there to defend you? Because... I know. Here's a spoiler alert, Doug. When those cases go to court, you lose. You lose. You lose. You always lose those ones. Yeah, and I think my answer to that is: Look, I'm not a constitutional scholar. I don't know <laughs> if it's legal or not, yeah. but I know that if you don't file your taxes, here's what happens. Right, and I, I guess, especially right now, we're living in this age with a lot of conspiracy theorists. Whatever. This is something that's been going on for you know a few decades now. I don't know. I don't know what it is in some people who who really want to believe these sorts of things, but you know what, maybe, maybe I'm just, you know, being too passive, you know, maybe I'm taking the path of least resistance. You know, that's not the kind of fight that I want to get into. Yeah. Again, you got to ask yourself the question, well, how's it working out for you? So yeah. do you think that's a battle you can win? Now, maybe it's a battle you want to fight. Maybe you do want to get right. high priced lawyers you know and go to that, the tax That's, that's a good way of it. saying it, right? Is that the battle you want to fight, right? You know, you, you commit your resources, your time, your money potentially, I know I don't. Yeah, that, it's, that's it's not the a kind of fight that, that I want. Nobody else has been able to win <laughs> right. up to this point. <laughs> right. And obviously, if you are not part of the tax system, you're also not part of the benefit system. Yeah. So, as a lot of people discovered in 2020, when they applied for CERB, mm-hmm. well, it's based on what your income was on your taxes last right. year. Well, if you're one of those people who didn't file their taxes, guess what? You couldn't qualify for that type of that type of benefit. So, okay, so. The answer to the question why you should file your own taxes yourself is it's cheaper right. in, in a lot of cases. You can do it yourself. You understand what's going on. You got more skin in the, the game. You understand right. what's happening. It's not that complicated. Not that complicated. Okay, so what's the other answer? When should I not file my taxes myself? What are the things that I should think about to right. bring in a professional right. to right. do my taxes? And, and I, I get it. You and I sitting around talking about this is something that... You know, even if we're not like the the smartest tax guys around, it's something that we're relatively comfortable with because of our background. There's going to be some people who just aren't. So my my general answer to your question is when it's outside your comfort zone. But try to expand that comfort zone. You know, and try to ask some questions. You know, and try to demystify it a little bit. And you know, the the tax programs that are out there, they're so useful. You don't have to know all the forms. You don't have to know where to put in the information. Most of them have like, like a, like an interview style where they ask you questions about your circumstances, and then it'll lead you to the forms that you need for your circumstances. So they're really, really trying to make it easy, but everybody's got a limit, right? Everybody got, has a limit on, on what they're, they're willing to, uh, to do and what they're comfortable with. So if you're not feeling comfortable, then and I'm not going to sit here and judge anybody for, for doing that. It's just, you know, trying to give yourself as much information as possible. But we're on the internet now, so we judge people. That's kind of how, kind of how well, it works. Well, that is kind of the way the net works, yes. So my advice would be, I totally get what you're saying. So if you're a little uncomfortable with this, I've always had someone do them, then okay, maybe this year you have someone else do them again. But why not in parallel do them yourself? <laughs> That's a great example. There, right? there are... How did I do? Yeah. Yeah. How did I do? There are programs that are either very low cost or free 
type in all the numbers, see what number you got. And if you end up getting the same number that the tax preparer got, okay, I guess you've proven you can do it yourself. Yep. And if you end up doing a better job, hey, I got a higher <laughs> refund than they said, go through it line by line, see what they missed. Right. You may find that you know your situation better than anyone. Right. So yeah, sure. You got to do a bit of research, do some reading, understand how it works. But you're right. A lot of these programs have a questionnaire did you have employment income? Did you pay rent? Did you do this? Right. You answer the questions, you fill in and the numbers. And it'll hold your hand through the preparation of it. Right. And with the autofill option, or as I call it, the suck it in option, if you set up a, your MyCRA account, you suck the information in, right. it's pretty much all there anyways. Kind of right. hard to kind of hard to screw it up. Okay. So I think we've, we've answered that question when you should and when you should perhaps, I mean, obviously you've got a complicated situation. Like you oh, said, yeah, you like, operate a you know, business. Business, high volume of investments. Corporation. You know, oh yeah. Corporation. You're leaving the country. There's some nuance there. All like, your crypto transactions, yeah, right, all that right. kind of stuff. So that in that case, then leaning on a professional probably isn't a bad idea. What is your final advice then for people to kind of wrap all this up? Anything else we need to think about when it comes to filing taxes? Um, no, I, I think I think we've really hit hit like the the really like the real gist of it. Just trying to, you know, demystify it. It's not that complicated. But really, if 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 it is outside your comfort zone, then there are experts out there to to help you with it. Makes sense to me. So there you go. Um, in a lot of cases, you can probably do it yourself. And of course, you and I are both believers in registering for a my CRA account. Oh, there's there's a lot of benefits to it. Because you can see all your stuff, your past history, your notice of assessment, right, what you right. owe, everything. What even, sorry, what, what is it that you call the autofill? The, the suck, suck in, it in button. The, the suck it in button. You need to have your CRA account to use the suck it in button. Yeah. So if you are going to be filing your taxes for the first time yourself this year, mm -hmm. then now would be the time to go onto the CRA website, register for my CRA, which takes a bit of time. You got oh. to prove that you are who you right. are. It's still kind of old fashioned. Right? And I mean, the, Every government agency falls victim to security issues from time to time. CRA, obviously, no different. But I mean, you have to go online and create the account, and then they literally mail you a verification code within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and then you punch in that verification exactly. code, and then you're good to go. Exactly. So you can't set up a My CRA account in five seconds. Right, right. It's going to take a bit longer <laughs> yeah. than that. So don't don't wait until April 29th thinking that right. you're going to uh, you know suck in your information, get your return done. Yeah. So if you don't have one, get it now. That yeah. way you've got access to all the information about you. It's your account. Yep. Yeah. And then you. You're good to go. Excellent. Ian Martin, thanks very much. You are welcome, Doug Hoyce. That is our show for today. Thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment. If you've got questions, I'll rope Ian in, get him to answer them for you. Happy to happy to do that. <laughs> and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere else, again, please subscribe. We like to have you available for us every Saturday morning when a new podcast release is released. That is our show for today. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30. Or 32. We actually did do 30 minutes.